Hey River people, how's it going? As I'm loading in here, I just want to give you guys a heads up that at certain times throughout the video, I'm going to be popping in to expand on some points when it comes to fishing this early fall pattern for River Smallmouth. Well y'all, what's up? Thanks for coming along. We are back out here at the Susquehanna River. Yesterday I was out here as well, but I was mostly just running and gunning, searching for fish. Didn't find a whole lot. I uh, found some smaller fish up to 17 in a stretch that I did well in over the summer, but as you know, the water changes, the water level is up, it is fall. Um, the fish just weren't in those spots because the water was so high. Um, a lot of the areas that they were tucked in in the summertime just honestly just disappeared because the water has flown over it so heavily so today we're out here in a new stretch and well not a new stretch I'm familiar with this but I'm gonna fish it a little bit differently I'm gonna go down and then I'm gonna go back up fish water that I've never fished hopefully find an area for tomorrow we've got a tournament it's the native big bass power hour they're giving out a thousand dollars every hour for a big fish hopefully find some big ones down here but anyway it is so foggy this morning Let's go ahead and get started fishing and uh, see if we can't find something. I'm going to get into my coffee and donuts here soon. Though. Basically looking for fish and eddies and current seams. Last night the big one was really tight. It's a pretty fast current. I was actually surprised. So I'm thinking that's where they're going to be set up. So as we get started fishing, one thing I want you guys to keep in mind about fall fishing and even early winter fishing is that you can still find fish shallow. So that's where you should be starting as you start to develop your pattern at the beginning of the day. There we go, fish. Man, he's running. Pike, not too bad, it's a little small. Not shallow. Not a bad one. Not huge. That's a pretty, pretty good one to start the morning off, guys. It's a good sign. I'm liking that. Nice 17 3 quarter inch fish start off the morning. We'll take that. Spinner bait. They're liking it. Had a giant smallmouth come out and miss it. Saw the brown. Came out to the current seam. Even though I missed this fish on top, it still gave me a clue as to what kinds of water the fish were relating to. So obviously my next step was to go look for as many current seams as I could find. And on the Susquehanna River, if you've ever been there, you know this, that's not hard to do. So that area I was fishing just behind these rocks still had eelgrass and if there's grass I'm basically not interested. Eelgrass is dying off. I do want to expand a little bit on those grass comments that I just made. I really don't like fishing around eelgrass once it gets even the slightest bit of brown because in my experience it sends the smallmouth running to hard cover. That and it's a pain in the butt to fish around. It may be tempting to fish around a patch of grass that has a little bit of green left in it but in my experience, that's usually fruitless. So I move on to hard cover and I stick with it, whether that's rock or wood, that's where the smallmouth are gonna be. But even though I may have been targeting the correct kind of water, I was doing it wrong. So as we see these next couple casts, I want you guys to ask yourselves, what am I doing wrong here? I'll be the first to admit that I am messing something up. What is that? This is a topic that we're going to return to later on in the video in more detail, but I have to admit I was making a secondary mistake in addition to this. 
Earlier in the summer, I had spent a pretty good amount of time fishing the Susquehanna River, and I found out that fish were starting their morning on the downstream side of cover pretty close to it. So as I was looking for current seams, even though that may have been the correct type of water to look for, I was fishing it wrong and I was positioning myself wrong. And this was because I wasn't quite out of that summer mentality. Maybe it's just I wasn't ready for the cold, but in any case, that kind of held me back from catching fish, I think, early on in the morning here. Jerkbait back in. Chunky little 15 maybe. I was just telling myself that if they're chasing a spinnerbait in top water, I don't really need to pause the jerkbait. I can get kind of aggressive with it, but I didn't think burn it away. Well, hopefully we can find a few bigger ones. pattern for small ones. Even though these two fish weren't giants, they still told me something important about how they were relating to structure and current. If you guys noticed, they were not tucked closely to rocks or closely behind islands. They were instead pulled off quite a ways behind them. And while they were behind them, they were still relating to current seams. And it's these subtleties that we have to pick up on as kayak anglers so we're not floating over spots we should be casting to and spooking fish like I'm probably doing here and so that we can develop patterns that we can repeat throughout the day and hopefully throughout the rest of the early fall. Jerkbait, a little bigger, but tops 15 and a half. But that's a lot of 15s for the power hour. That's pretty good. All I'm doing over here is working current seams behind rocks and grass island. Mostly rock though on this side, which is, I think, good. Really quick, I want to jump in here and point out a few characteristics of this spot 
Firstly, we have a relatively large piece of wood cover that's creating current seams that flow down into a slower flow area. And I would also like to draw your attention to the positioning of my kayak. I am no longer sitting right up on the area that I should be casting to. Instead, I'm sitting a little ways back based on what I learned. I'm gonna bring the bait through that slow flow area where all those current seams are flowing down into. all this fish you figure there should be a nice one out there another 17 three quarters maybe could get 18 out of it very close good fish good fat one man that thing's heavy it's three pounds easy all right so at this point i thought that i had figured something out so what do you need to go do in that case you gotta go test your theory so i went up out into the main channel and I was planning on fishing isolated rocks. Now here I do have to apologize the audio gets a little weird because my rod was bumping into the camera so I just switched mics that I was using. In any case I come up on this rock I make one quick cast it looks like I'm gonna go up too far on it so I hit my reverse on my Hobie make another cast and that's what you're seeing here. I caught the crayfish, I don't know. Solid fish right there. 17 and a half. Well, the uh, downstream side of these rocks out in the center channel pattern still holds up here. That rock is the bigger one, it's a little more isolated. There's this, this, then there's that. That has no grass on it. These two have grass. I don't know that the grass matters. I was still catching them behind grass back there. But I think the size and isolation does. I think that's a key component here. So as I'm pulling up to the spot here, I do want you guys to pay attention to it because to me, it actually doesn't look very special. There's nothing that stands out to me about this spot other than the fact that it's an island. However, while I was scouting new water for the tournament, I did get a couple bites here, caught one fish, so I went ahead and marked it on Google Maps. And it wasn't until tournament day when I lost a really big fish here that I decided I needed to take a look at it from a map view and see what was going on. So let's take a closer look at this. And this illustrates, again, just how far back fish can be pulled off of cover this time of year. Before we get into the satellite view, let's go ahead and take a look from the view I had from my kayak. Looking up towards the top of the island, you can see a current seam flowing down like any other island. It's long, but other than that, there's nothing that screams, this is big fish territory. So taking a bird's eye view, we can get a better idea of what this fish was relating to. And even though it seems like there's not a whole lot there, there are a few characteristics of this spot that I think make it a big fish spot. As we already mentioned, there's a current seam that flows down into slower water. But if we look at the satellite imagery, we can see areas of darker color around the island, and these are troughs of deeper water. 
this deeper water runs parallel to that current seam and they run pretty far down and this fish was located in one of those troughs way back behind the island and this exemplifies how far back these fish can be pulled off cover this time of year and if you're casting to spots like those shown here you're gonna miss those fish and to drive the point home, I'll leave you guys with one last catch in its entirety. This fish ended up being the best one of the day and may have been the farthest away from the cover. Biggest of the day. It's a nice thick Susquehanna smallmouth right there. Should be over 18. Biggest of the day. Threw it directly in the current seam. Back behind that log. 18 and three quarter inch fish. Pretty far back from the cover, but in the current seam still. It's where they've been all day, just locking in that pattern. This is why it's really important to cast the different parts behind cover like this. I cast it in the middle. I don't know if I covered that right side, but as soon as I got it out into this current seam right here, a little ways back, about halfway back from here, uh, I got bit. So that just goes to show that the fish aren't going to be set up in the exact same spot every single day, every season. Today, it seems like they're, I mean, if we're just using my distance right now from this laydown, it seems like they're about halfway to the cover. Um, there have been a couple that have been a little bit closer, uh, but for the most part, they've been a little ways back. I'm not going to quantify it because it's just all relative and how small of a condensed area this is. This is a big uh, open area of water, a lot of deep water back here, a lot of slow water here in the middle, and that fish was hanging out in that seam. All right, y'all, that was a fun day of fall fishing. I think that's going to do it. If you found anything in this video helpful or you liked anything, go ahead and subscribe and click the like button. Uh, but if you don't, that's fine. If you don't want to subscribe, that's also fine because I'm going fishing anyway, guys. I'll be out here. I'll be catching smallies. That's what I'm going to do. Subscribers or not, YouTube or not, I'm going fishing. See y'all.